I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Hey, my name is Ryan. This is Ade. Welcome to a special edition of Box Talk. It's Frotch Groves 2. It is, guys. Look, this is the one that everyone's been waiting for. Talking is over. You heard from the boxers, you heard from the experts Doug Fisher, Glenn Johnson, Freddie Roach, Amir Khan. No one can split them. In three hours and 45 minutes, we find out who is the new or remaining WBA and IBF middleweight champion of the world. So let's go have a good night, have some drinks, enjoy the fights. All I can say is wow, that's how you end the fight. Carl Frotch, what can I say? Adi, pass it back to you. <laughs> Let me tell you something right now. It was a different fight from the fight we expected. It yeah. weren't the blood and guts yeah. war from Shira, but we showed, Carl Frotch showed what Carl Frotch is. And he's an underrated boxer, underrated tactician. Yeah. Carl Frotch came to that fight, not going for the knockout, not going for the kill, but he kept his jab out there, kept that range, also had that shoulder out there as well. And he was like, he negated Groves from pushing onto him too much. And that was the difference in the fight. Whereas as much as Groves tried to box and tried to explode on Frotch at a few occasions, Frotch always kept that range. No, yeah, you're, you're right. It was, it was absolutely fantastic performance. But it takes two to tango, so we've got to give credit to George Groves yeah, as well. Definitely. Look, we said initially when we done the when we done um, the pre-fight talk about this fight that it might have similarities between the Ben and Eubank, the second fight, mm -hmm. in terms of the first fight being so explosive. Yeah. And the second fight, everyone kind of stood off a bit. They both knew what yeah. each other had. What the risk was. What exactly. And, and Carl Frotch definitely do, knew that. A lot, was, a lot was made about the spar with Chris Eubank Jr. And you can see how it helped him. He kind of negated George Groves' speed yeah. by keeping that distance. But when he, when he kind of um, sort of made the distance and went in closer, he went in really close. Yeah. So he, he wasn't in the pocket a lot. He yeah. went in really close, banged to the body, then stepped away very quickly. What, what, what you guys know, when you get that close, what Frotch done, where you're actually chest to chest, you stop the other guy from working. Exactly. Because Groves, 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 Groves is more like a boxer puncher. Yeah. It's kind of rangy, kind of stays out and kind of gets you with counter shots and trying to take those heavy shots. When you're that close, you can't really get a shot because Groves is coming around and Frotch is there, it was a little tight out on the yeah. inside and worked the body hard. Oh, he worked the body very hard. Worked the body very I mean, hard. We talked about four or five shots of the body, yeah. then moved away. Yeah. Got clipped a couple of times, but it's a boxing match, you expect that. But, from, but when he did get clipped, it was almost like taking it on, on yeah. the back. So he wasn't taking it flush, taking it and moving away. Frotch is a guy that always says his kind of defense is his face, where he's, I'm trying, he's not the most defensively swabby person. Yeah. But the few shots he took were nothing compared to the shots he took in the previous fight. Because, like I said, he had that shoulder on there and he kept that range. Like you said, credit to George Groves. Now, I mean, the girl understands where this is, a, this is a fight and Groves tried to do what he wanted to do, but it was down to the experienced fighter. And this is where experience comes in when you talk about world championship experience. Frotch has been there so many times before and he understands about the 12-round pace and how to do certain things. But Groves, as good as he is, as talented as he is, he's never been to that deep before. And this is where you have about matchmaking and developing. Frotch had that behind him. That's what helped Frotch win this fight. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Frotch has always said to George Groves, look, you've not gone into deep waters. You've not gone into, you've, yeah, you've had 12 rounds, but you've not had 12 rounds against world and yeah. elite level fighters. When the going gets tough, how do, you, how do you perform? It's like Frotch obviously changed his style and tactics a lot. Mm -hmm. And you can see George Groves didn't really know what to do for the yeah. first three or four rounds. It's almost like, okay, how do I work this yeah. out? Where, where Frotch has been the person that's fought at that elite level, he knew how to react. When things got bad, he knew what to do. The jab was perfect. Yeah, it, yeah. It, you know, kept that. And it is, I don't know what Frotch's reach is, but he's got a very, very long, long reach with the jab. It's, not, it's the way he turns. He, with he his brings back. it up from here as well, doesn't he? It? It's very long. Frotch actually kind of jabs with his back, where yeah. he actually turns and gets his whole back and whole. So you get your range, range and, yeah. a full range on his shots. It's really yeah. it's unorthodox, but it works. It works for him. him well. It works for him. You know, like I don't want to start listing names again, but you know. It's Frotch's performances against the likes of um, Pascal, Ward, Kessler, um, Abraham. Abrahams. It's those performances that got him to where he was last night. And it's a very good thing about boxing. People talk about saying speed kills. Speed kills, but timing can beat speed. Yeah. Balance can beat speed. Mm. Distance can beat speed. And Frotch had got goals at all the speed and all the range, but it, it was those elements that... You know, look, it's, long, it's long been said that Frotch is a warrior and Frotch is this and Frotch is that. And look, Frotch does tick all those boxes. But what people forget is Frotch is a boxer as well. Yeah. He showed that against Abraham, going, going to Abraham's backyard in Germany and outboxing Abraham, giving a boxing clinic for 12 rounds. 
Frost should have said it himself in the post fight press conference yesterday. I'm a double ABA champion. I can box I want to box. I don't think he proved that in the first five or six rounds yesterday. He can box yeah. if he needs to box. Before we go, before we talk about the explosive knockout, I think George Groves is in a very good position because when you look at when you look at overall, he put in a good performance. He didn't have a, he he was getting out, in my opinion, he was getting outboxed and out hustled in the exchanges, but he was landing good shots and was Very holding his shot. own. And the rounds where Fritz was winning, he was winning, but Groves was always in the fight. And I feel that, given that type of performance, it shows that he is a legit top 10 contender. He definitely, he definitely is a legit top 10 contender, but what, what, one thing that did disappoint me yesterday, it was, it was his punch combinations. Mm. It, it was, he always seemed to be going for that one punch yeah. too much. That one punch, one punch, one punch, overhand right, overhand right. Yeah, he was set up with the jab a little bit, but to me, he was looking for that punch far too much. And I think that was his problem yesterday. Yeah, you're, you're right. He was, he was looking for that big right hand. Like, when he did tag Fritz with the right hand, he tagged him clean a few times, yeah. but it was not enough. Sorry to change the subject, but you're talking about combinations. Carl Fritz's combinations was on point last night. Very he good. done some, it was, um, I think it was left to the body, right to the body, left to the body, left to her top, right out. It, yeah. it, it was Variety. Yeah. It was variety. Something I didn't expect him to do. It was almost. variety. It was variety. And, and I actually forgot about it until you mentioned combination. It yeah. was so much variety with his combinations. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he mixed it up. You always talk about going head, body, head, body, and doing it. But it That's just wasn't head, body. It was yeah. just, it was free fall to the body, couple to the head, slip back, go back to the body. It was. It yeah. confused Groves. It, it did confuse Groves. You can see it confused yeah. Groves. But look, Groves is one of those fighters that. Um, and we will talk about the knockout, but you look at Groves and where you can go from here. Look, he signed with the Silent Brothers, yeah. which isn't a bad thing. They hold, they hold Kessler. Yeah. They hold Abraham. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, there's another World Championship fight in there for him. Getting knocked out the way he did and the way he spoke before the fight, he's definitely going to have to go back, yeah. rethink, and analyse that performance and have a look. But there's no shame. Yeah. We always said someone was going to get knocked out. That wasn't going to go points, we kind of yeah. said. And it just yeah. happened to be him. It could have been the other way around, but it was a vicious knockout. Yeah. It was a very vicious knockout. The way Groves hit the floor was... Buckled under his body it was a very, very vicious knockout. But you know, um, Frotch, the way Frotch knocked Groves out was what you I would personally call like that classical textbook knockout. Oh, it's beautiful. Where beautiful. He throws a jab, set up with the turns left. the head over, and once you can't see it coming, it's too late. It sweeped him straight it's across. And, and Frotch isn't considered fast. That, that yeah. right hand isn't considered fast. Yeah. But it still shows. Once you set that, once you set up with the left, where Groves is blocking yeah. the left, you're not seeing all that space. There, yeah. it's gone. But with Frotch's body position, where he was so side on, yeah. and when he hits that jab, you couldn't. See, even if your face was forward, you couldn't you see, see it coming. It was a blindsided. Yeah. And because because Groves' head turned with the shot. That's what done it. Now I mean, they always say the one that takes you out is the one you don't see coming, and that was the perfect example. I don't want to sound like I'm overly on frotch, but that was the perfect example of how you knock someone out. Look, there's no better way. I think it's been said by so many promoters and people after the fight. There's no better way to finish a fight. Eighty thousand people, Wembley Stadium, all the trash yeah. talk. Remember, these guys have been going at it not for six months, guys. For one year, these guys have been going yeah. back and forth. You want to end a fight? That's what dreams are made of. That yeah. is a way to end a fight. Yeah. Look, Carl wants to go to Vegas after they're already they're already ruining that the girl fight. Yeah. We knew that wasn't really going to happen. Talking about going to Vegas, look, Carl could retire now. Yeah. If he really wants to, he could retire now after that landing shot. But I think Chavez Jr. has a, a fight he probably wants in Vegas. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to fight in Vegas? I can understand. That's his. That's his wish. That's his dream to do the Vegas. Do the Vegas fight. A big US card. I understand that, but you know. I did see signs last night of Frotch's age. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. His feet were heavier, yeah. much heavier than before. There was times in the first three rounds where he actually looked more static, whereas he just was not really walking too much. And uh, it, whether he wasn't walking, he just wasn't moving as swiftly as previously. And I wouldn't say it took time to warm up, but he was not as fluid naturally. It's like the gears had to get going. And that obviously, when you have heavy legs, that is a sign of an older fighter coming onto it. There were signs of old fighter in there, I, I, I can agree with you that, but there was also a sign of a nervous fighter in there. Yeah. And that's because you've been tagged by Groves. Look, I think the good thing for Carl Frost is that he fought George Groves. There's not many guys out in the super middleweight division that are faster than George Groves mm. or as explosive as George Groves. So he's probably going to look at that fight and think, if I do fight a Chavez Jr., Chavez Jr. definitely isn't as fast footed as George Groves. No, definitely not. I don't know if he carries the same power. I mean, he carries a lot of power, but George Groves' power, we spoke to Ian Napper yesterday and he said, don't be surprised by George Groves' power. He was knocking people out in the amateurs like yeah. that just as well. I mean, he's fought, what, 21 times now, yeah. 15 KOs. He's got a very good KO record as well. I, I think, I don't think the punch power is what scares Frotch. I think it's the yeah. foot speed and hand yeah. speed. And I think in terms of foot speed, hand speed, compared to Chavez and Groves, I think yeah. Groves is definitely ticking all those boxes. Yeah, and you know, boxes never retire when you're on top. Boxes always seem to actually go down that 
unfortunate long road. Yeah. But you know, it's always good to, I always think it's good to retire on top at your best. And I think for, for Frotch, he won't get much better for performances than that. Yeah, look, you're never gonna, you know, look, the problem is, it's not just the performance, you're never gonna beat the build up, yeah. you're never gonna beat everything that came with it. If it was just the performance, then you, you know, I can understand the carry on. Yeah. You, you, he's even spoke to Eddie Hearn yesterday in the post fight. He said, Eddie, how do you beat that? Yeah. How do you beat 80,000 people? Yeah. I'd love to see what the pay per view numbers were because yeah. it must have been bloody yeah. huge. Yeah. Every single fighter in the world seemed to be ringside. Yeah. Stavern was there, yeah. Beaker was there, yeah. Hay was there, yeah. Kessler was there, Khan was there. Khan was, it, it was just yeah. ridiculous. And, you know, I don't know. Look, moving on from that, the girl performance. I, okay. The girl done what I asked him to do. What you said he was going to do. Yeah, he I said in that. six. Yeah, don't beat you. Say that. You don't four. Four. Yeah. Yeah. four. You know, like Brendan Gonzalez is a good farm. No, don't. You can't say oh he was overrated. Now people thought was telling me that we were wrong. Telling Ali we were wrong, and it's going to be the, the girls going to get knocked out and get beat. But like I said before, when you reason why you have people going through levels of six rounders, eight rounders, ten round is to build them up. When the fighter had not done a twelve rounder before in his career, that tells you something about his camp. His training and his management, that they're developing the person to reach somewhere. James the girl is an Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, he's got that. He's got really a tremendous amateur background, yeah. and he had one close, controversial loss to George Groves. That's not a bad thing. No. Yeah, that's a season pro moving forward. Where Brandon Gonzalez was a guy who was a very good fighter, but he was on his way up. He hasn't reached that level. And at the end of the day, when all the talk is done, it's a fight. It's two people in there. You could, you could train someone all day long, but they've got to put it together in their head. Yeah. And Brandon Gonzalez didn't get a chance to do that because the girl had it already. Yeah, we, we, looked, at, and we looked at Brandon Gonzalez's record before the fight was... I mean, when the fight was made. Mm-hmm. And we kind of predicted then, looking mm-hmm. at the record, and look at his thought that uh, Groves would yeah. beat him. I'm sorry, that the girl would beat him. Mm-hmm. After that, there was a lot of kind of... Almost a build-up of he sparred Andre Ward. He, so the, the build-up for that fight was really like he sparred Andre mm-hmm. Ward. That's what they're trying to sell the fight on. But you can see... Brandon Gonzalez didn't have a good amateur record. Yeah. He didn't have many amateur fights. I think turned pro very late. And you can see early on, I think um, the girl rocked yeah. him. And from that moment on, the girl just, I don't know, put his foot to the pedal and showed some. I'm not joking. We spoke about his inside boxing. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. It was honestly yeah. first class. It was yeah. brilliant. Yeah. What, people like, what you got to think about sparring is that the best way to learn to spar is to spar with someone better than you. Yeah. Yeah. So that person can carry you and show you the little things you want to do and make you do things and lead you to, to educate you. So sparring with Andre Ward, yes, you're sparring with Andre Ward, but it doesn't mean you're sparring with the best Andre Ward that's Ward's trained for a fight. Ward is carrying you and showing you how to learn and how to do certain things. And that's what Brandon Gonzalez was. He's sparring with Ward, but he's not fighting Andre Ward. Two big differences. Yeah, I think sometimes fights are sold too much on A, who they're sparring, and B, who their trainer is. Yeah. Look, there's no taking away from Virgil, he's a very good trainer, mm. but it doesn't mean that Virgil Hunter's coming to fight. Do yeah. you, know, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. trying to say? Yeah. A lot's been made of the Virgil Hunter Andre Ward thing. That's a great relationship. It doesn't mean that relationship's going to work with everyone. Yeah. I think yesterday we, we showed why it isn't going to work. Yeah. Look, where does James DeGaulle go from here? Look, James DeGaulle isn't going to fight Carl Frosch. I don't think it's going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, look, there's, there's, Cole Frotch isn't going to want to want to fight another young, fast, hungry kid yeah. that kind of doesn't bring the same money or the same kind of yeah. accolade that Groves bring. I don't know. I, I would love, obviously, they're going to have to go back and look at George Groves and see where it goes from him. But I'd love to see George Groves fighting James and Gull for the vacant idea of time. I don't think yeah. they'll put Groves in that position straight away after, what, two yeah. losses, which yeah. is what they are. Yeah. But that's the kind of fight I'd love to see. Yeah. I, I think that would be a great fight. I think that would be a true... I, I think that is... Domestically for the UK, I think oh. it's a great fight. But I actually think that on that performance with the girl, he can go further. What we said in our previous is that he is, it'd be a shame if he don't get a world title. But the type of performance he put on last night, and like we said previously, he's actually put it together. Mm. He knows what he can do. He showed the power, he showed the skills. He was to go from strength to strength. I wouldn't recommend anyone fighting Sakio Bika because he's just a that animal. That name, but he should go for Sakio Bika. Yeah, that kind of footwork I mean, and speed, I think, will cause Bika. Yeah. You think you think Carl Frotch is ploddy? Yeah. Let's be honest. Sakio Bika is a lot more yeah. ploddy than yeah. Carl Frotch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on that performance, why would you want to go further than George Grove? Why leave it domestic or leave it as a regional thing? Go for the world title. Push forward. Bika was there to scout the yeah. fighters. Yeah. Obviously, Carl Frotch is not going to fight Bika because money, money, money wise, it's not going to be there. But for the girl over in the UK, especially because he's got a name, he's fought over here before with Kawasaki, he's not internationally, he wasn't in the Super Six, fought on the world, on the world. So there we go. It all makes perfect sense. Okay, very quickly, minute left. Kevin Mitchell, good performance or shaky? Is he ready for the world title, really, after that performance? I don't, I don't know if he's ready for the world title. Um, the guy he fought was very... Um, Ad- 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 very explosive, 
very strong, very fast, but technically raw. He was really wild and really swinging, and I think that got Mitchell off his game. But I think for about like round three or round two, round three, we started saying that um, he's slowing down and Mitchell's picking him up a bit. But it's, it's a weird fight, though, because it's like ups and downs. Like, whereas I thought he was slowed down, then he seemed to pick up again yeah. round eight or nine, yeah. and then he slowed down. I think he ran out of gas. He yeah. Yeah. I don't think he was hurt. I, I think he ran out of gas. Yeah. I think the stoppage was a bit, mm, but... De- definitely, definitely. Just strange stoppage. Ten yeah. seconds left in round 11. Yeah. Mitchell's down on points. Yeah. One more yeah. round to go. Mitchell was down on points, but that 11th round would have gave Mitchell three points. Yeah. Because the two not down. Yeah. So he could have won the fight legit. Not was he legit. I mean, he could have won on points. If it, barely, carried on. if it carried on. But um, it was a tough performance Mitchell needed, needed, I think. I think, you know, going through the rough and tumble is going to prepare you for a world title. Okay, guys, look. This is our post-fight reaction. What do you think? Was that the best British night of boxing you've ever seen? It's up there. I'm not going to say it was the best yet. It's one of the ones I want to go and look at all the fights again. You know how you do. It was definitely up there. It was definitely up with the Eubank. It was definitely up with the Ricky Hatton Show, Joe Calzaghe, Lennox Lewis, Bruno. It was definitely up there with those lot. Wasn't the best. Where does Carl Froch go from here? Does he retire? I mean, you could do after that 80,000 Wembley, all the hype of the fight. Are you going to top that? Or does it go to America and get a big last payday against Chavez Jr.? Leave your comments below. We want to know what does George Groves do? What does James, Ge- James the Girl do? What does Kevin Mitchell go from here? Leave your comments. Email us. Box Talk at hotmail.co.uk and please don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Box Talk UK. And guys, don't forget for all your latest news and reviews on the sport we love, check out ringnews24.com and thanks for tuning in for another edition of Box Talk.